Hi, I'm Chef Robin. Welcome to Hands in the Kitchen Workshop. Today we're going to be talking about menu planning. Menu planning is an idea that's challenging to some people and pointless to other people. They know what they want to eat, they feel like they don't need to write it down on paper, uh, but we're going to take a few minutes to make menu planning not so challenging, a little bit more simple to address, and also why it's not pointless, why it actually does have some reason behind it. So first we're gonna discuss why menu plan, then we're going to discuss the components of a healthy plate so that when you plan out your menu, you're actually getting all the nutrition and healthy food on that plate that you're planning on. And then we're gonna get started, grab a pencil, some sticky notes and go to it. So. Here we go. Why would you make a meal plan? And a meal plan being taking uh, that meal of the day that's most important to you and actually figuring out what the components are and doing it for Monday through Sunday um, or as many days as you feel like you can do. Why would you go ahead and want to spend your time doing that? And the first reason, of course, what is near and dear to us next to food is the dollar and we like to save our food dollars. We don't want to go to the grocery store and just splurge unnecessarily on the pretty packaged item because that's what strikes our fancy. We actually want to have a plan as to what we're going to need to have in our kitchen for that week in order to execute those meals that we've decided on being healthy and nutrition, nutritionous, nutritional, sorry, for us and have all the things that we need to put them together. So if you go to the grocery store with that detailed critical list, you're not going to be uh, overbuying and then wasting, wasting food. You're also not going to be making more trips to the grocery store because you forgot to get something that you needed. Possibly you are going to the grocery store one day a week with a caretaker or a youngster or in a van with other people. You want to go and get what you need and come home with what you need so that you actually can make those healthy meals through the week. You also get to take control. When you make a meal plan, even if you're going by the DASH diet, even if you're taking into consideration doctor's advice, you can take control of what you're going to eat day to day. As well as taking control of your food dollar, you can take control of how much time you're going to be spending in the kitchen, whether it's a totally raw meal, whether everything goes in the oven, but it's up to you. So you can choose healthier foods if you feel like you've not been eating quite as healthy. When you see them down on paper and you see that you have potato chips five times a week, Maybe not so healthy, you might want to trade that out. Or you can put your favorite foods in along with healthy foods and you can try a brand new food or a brand new cooking technique that you haven't done before. Obviously at our age, we have cooked thousands of meals and we think maybe everything is done and we are over it. But if you allow yourself a little bit of a challenge, the, the grocery store is full of products that possibly you've never brought home before. It's full of things that just need a little attention to them in a different way. And you could find a brand new favorite food that you never were aware of. The next reason that kind of ties in with the first is that if you make a meal plan, it allows you to repurpose food. So you can set up your prep time, and your menu that if you're making food for one meal translates easily and creatively into another meal. Therefore, you're repurposing food in a creative way and not wasting it. And the last one is reducing the waste. No one wants to see food being thrown away. No one wants to buy food and just throw away those food dollars. So if you have an idea of how you're going to be using that food when you bring it home, even before you bring it home, more than likely, you're gonna be able to cut down on the waste that occurs in your kitchen because you're going to be using it for that healthy meal that you plan and also repurposing it for another meal that you plan. So let's get into the basics 
and remember what a healthy plate is formed of so that when we do make our meal plan, our plates are exciting and nutritional and have all the components that we need to make it healthy for us to enjoy. Looking at our plate, we all remember the food pyramid from when we were in grade school. It's changed a little bit now, whereas the American Cancer Association, the American Heart Association, the National Institutes of Health, all those powers that be that do a lot more scientific study than us now recommend that half of our plate, a generous half of our plate, be fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables, colorful fruits and vegetables, half of our plate. Then a small quarter is going to be our protein serving. Our protein serving is four ounces for people our age. Four ounces translates to the palm of my hand or a fist. You're going, what? Small amount of protein. And that's true. Our bodies really only need at that meal's sitting four ounces of protein. So if you buy a pound of fish, that can translate into three meals with that as its protein. Even though that pound of fish may seem exorbitantly expensive at the front, if you're getting three proteins for three meals out of that fish, it's really an inexpensive buy. So your protein is four ounces, a small quarter of your plate, Another small quarter of your plate, you would want to as often as you can to be a carbohydrate in the form of a whole grain. Most of the grains we eat have been refined and refining grains into bread and pastas does take away from their nutritional value and the fiber content that we get when we eat a whole grain. So whole grains are in the form of brown rice, millet, teff, farro, quinoa, White rice goes on and on and on. Uh, there's lots of varieties of whole grains. And a kitchen tip is the night before you have a whole grain on your menu. If you pour boiling water over it, let it sit overnight on your counter, your cook time is dramatically decreased. So it's very easy to incorporate whole grains into your diet. You just need to know how to go about doing it. So. That was our healthy plate. Hopefully you guys remember half of your healthy plate, a bountiful selection of fruits and vegetables, a quarter, small quarter, whole grains, small quarter, that four ounce serving of protein, and then a little bit of fats and oils. All right, let's get started. How to make your weekly meal plan. The very first thing you need to do is to consider your weekly schedule. Maybe you do the same thing every single day with no change whatsoever so that you have the same amount of time every day. You could do dinner from one to four o'clock if you wanted to, prepping for three hours, having a lovely dinner. But most people's lives are not like that. Most people's lives are filled up with other things comings and goings. So if I look at a calendar and I realize that at Sunday I'm going to be at church, Wednesday or Sunday I'm going to be at church, Monday I'm having company, Thursday I have a doctor's appointment, Saturday I'm going to the farmer's market, all of those things are going to influence the amount of time and the amount of energy I have to do my meal plan for that night. So you really want to give it some thought. If the going to the doctor makes you a very anxious and stressed person, I would prepare a very simple meal or maybe that's my takeout night to get dinner. So keep that in mind. Your weekly schedule is going to influence what you might want to have for dinner that evening. Then create some theme meals. And that may sound really goofy to you, but more than likely you are already doing that. Um, and I did some two suggestions for each day of the week. Uh, and I just want to really quickly go through Sunday. Like we said, maybe if you go to church, maybe Sunday is your soup and salad meal for dinner, or maybe it's your stir fry day. 
uh, Monday, maybe that's the day is a meatless day for you. Or you make Mexican meat, make Mexican food on that Monday. Tuesday could be your talk, takeout day or taco day. Uh, Wednesday, hump of the week, maybe you are rather tired from whatever's been going on at the beginning of the week. Maybe Wednesday is when you just have a slamming sandwich for dinner or a burger. Uh, Thursday, you could have breakfast for dinner or Italian night. Friday, a lot of people religiously have fish on Friday, or maybe Friday is that day you clean out your freezer and your freezer becomes the basis of your meal plan for that Friday night. On Saturday, maybe you just put something in the slow cooker, walk away and let that be your evening meal, or you make it a quick and easy sheet pan meal where your proteins and your vegetables go on a sheet pan, go into the oven, and then you're just responsible for the grain and the fruit of that meal. So take into consideration what you're doing that day of, Take into consideration the day of the week and if you have a theme for that day. The theme just kind of actually narrows down your ideas for dinner. It kind of gives you a framework to work within so that you're not always going, oh God, what's for dinner? So you kind of have some kind of fun orientation to kind of guide you through that meal planning. Start simple. Okay, if you are already being advised by your doctor to cut back or to increase on something, let that be a guide for you as well. Maybe you're following the DASH diet, which makes meal plans. Maybe you're following a keto diet, which makes meal plans. Get the help from outside sources that you can rely on <coughs> and use that as the basis for some of your day's meals. Also, you don't have to do three meals a day for 30 days. You don't have to sit down and do an entire month of meal planning. You can center in on that one meal that you eat that is your solid go-to meal for the day for a week and see how it works out for you. See if it was beneficial for you to take the time. See if it was interesting for you to try and work within a meal plan. Start simple, don't overwhelm yourself with having to come up with 90 different dishes for a month. So just start simple and go with that one meal for your week. Uh, also, grocery flyers are great as far as kind of giving you some guidance for your meal plan. I am a sucker for two for ones. I am a sucker for buy one, get one free. I like religiously read these, thumb through these, circle these, take them with me, cut coupons, <coughs> and actually rely on grocery flyers quite a bit to make my grocery trip economical and also to build my meals around. So grocery flyers are helpful. Again, respect the prep time that you need to put together that meal plan that you've made. If you love being in the kitchen, then for sure, start a meal from nuts to soup to salad to entree to dessert. Go for it and just experience loving being in the kitchen and making a lot of fun food and repurposing a lot of that fun food. But if you don't, if you find cooking a chore, if you find preparing food a chore, then be respectful of that and incorporate some prepackaged food or pre-made meals that you can rely on that are healthy and nutritional, but that still provide you with a nice meal to enjoy. Um, when you're putting together your meal plan, you also want to consider variety. Like I was saying before, there's so many products out there in the grocery store, in the farmer's market, that we just need to jump out of our little regular boxes and take a big challenging culinary leap and check it out. Um, sometimes they're presented in the flyers or also almost all grocery stores now are doing a publication that if you buy $20 worth of groceries and who goes into a grocery store and doesn't spend $20, but 
Uh, they have these publications that are using products in the store in a creative way that you can leaf through. Uh, in this one, they, all, they even have some two-for-one dinners that you can make that translate into one solid meal that can be repurposed into another solid meal. So use those. Uh, this is one that was centered on pizza. I don't do a lot of pizza, but this has a great overnight focaccia recipe. So it, focaccia is a really, really easy standard uh, or standard mixer. You can make it in a standard mixer if you like, if you don't need to knead the dough by yourself. And it rests overnight. The next day you pull it out, you press it out on a sheet tray, put it in the oven, and you can freeze some of it. You can use some of it as a base for toppings uh, or croutons on salad. Very versatile. And those publications were free, or except for the $20 bill from the grocery store. But they are in every grocery store, and you can make use of them. And they're very helpful to kind of get your creative juices going. So, um, <clears throat> after we've looked through our flyers and our cookbooks or thinking seasonally, thinking how much we want to be in the kitchen, thinking of all of those things that we have taken into consideration before we make a meal plan. Then we want to make a very precise list when we go to the grocery store, but we also want to shop at home first, okay? So we want to see what's at home. This is a very short list of some things in my cupboard and pantry, but because I am aware that they are there, and I know that they need to be used, I can incorporate them with foodstuffs that I get from the grocery store can, so that I have all of those components of the healthy plate that we wanted. So really make use of what you have at home, and then mostly your grocery store purchases should be from those perimeter walls of the grocery store, the produce, the fruits and vegetables, the meat products or eggs and cheese and dairy. Um, <clears throat> so, when we went to the grocery store, all of these items that are on here were on sale. The pasta, Gorilla Pasta, four boxes for $5, really good price. Uh, cherry tomatoes were $2 for a little container, pretty good price. The chicken thighs were on sale, the cod was on sale. Everything that I have on this side coming from the grocery store, I made sure was on sale and was in season and therefore in, on sale. Um, so very available product. Uh, when you make your meal plan, you don't really want to necessarily be thinking outside of the box too much in terms of, I'm not going to be serving a venison steak this week because no one is hunting for deer in this season. I'm not necessarily going to be serving a lot of um, citrus this week. I do have orange slices, but citrus is generally more prolific and more on sale in the winter and fall times of the year than right now. Right now we have the great uh, fresh greens, corn on the cob, berries are everywhere. So we really want to make use of that stuff that's in season. <coughs> Excuse me and have it be colorful and exciting on our plate and nutritious for us to use. So, I'm gonna stand back out of the way and I have put together some items for a meal plan for this week. We're gonna talk about them a little bit and then when we look critically at them, how we can translate them into lunches or dinners. Okay. So on our stir fry day, Chicken thighs were on sale. I usually buy chicken thighs because they're more flavorful than the regular chicken breast. Uh, these were boneless and skinless, which is great for you guys not having to deal with bones or skin. If you buy a package of six, I would cook them all at the same time, and then you have that cooked chicken product to use for the rest of the week, either in a salad or we're going to throw some in tacos or into a soup. <clears throat> So I'm doing some stir-fry veggies. 
Another time saver, it's a little bit pricier, but they, grocery stores now are offering vegetables that are already shredded for you. Uh, in this uh, grocery store flyer, um, Green Giant had broccoli and cauliflower for sale in bags that was already cut and washed for you. Um, so it was very easy to go ahead and just add a little stir fry oil to Mari and make stir fry vegetables if the vegetables are already prepped. And then brown rice. Saturday night I put hot water over my rice so it's going to cook really quickly and then I'm going to have some grapes. So texturally I have things that give me some resistance to my teeth and are fun. I have juicy stuff, I have my grain, um, and I have a lot of color and I have a lot of nutrition. If you don't do chicken, you might want to consider doing tofu or tempeh or even a poached egg. So some kind of protein could be added to that meal. You could do a fried egg and put it on top of your vegetables or rice, or you could add beans to your rice and have your protein that way. Uh, we're going to take some of our rice and on Monday make a veggie Buddha bowl. There's a post-it. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is a poster about a Buddha bowl, building a brainier Buddha bowl. Buddha bowls have proteins in them of all different varieties. You can add a creamy nature to your Buddha bowl, a crunchiness to your Buddha bowl, and then a lot of greens and vegetables to your Buddha bowl. So um, start with the grain from the day before. We cook it up so that we can transfer some over. Uh, I'm going to roast some chickpeas in the oven, which is just taking canned chickpeas, rinsing them off under cold water, tossing them with a little oil and spice, putting them into the oven to kind of dehydrate them and give them a little crunch. And while they're in the oven, I'm also going to throw in some sweet potatoes. And at the very end, in the last 10 minutes of cooking the sweet potatoes soft, I'm going to throw some shredded kale. So it wilts it and we can have in our Buddha bowl, some brown rice, nice, some roasted chickpeas. That gives us our protein, some nice curried sweet potatoes, some shredded kale, and then avocado, which is a nice fat component on top. And then some really refreshing applesauce for our fruit. <clears throat> so of these items, the rice was already made for you. You're just, the chickpeas are coming from a can just need a little bit of attention. Really, all you're doing is tearing some kale, tossing it in the oven, cutting a few potatoes, tossing it in the oven, cutting an avocado, and maybe getting some applesauce from a product that you respect. So that's a pretty easy meal. So if you have a hard Monday, if Monday is a hard day for you starting your week, you might want to look at something easy to put together. On Tuesday, we're going to take out tacos, or we're going to make tacos. Um, I'm going to use some corn tortillas that I bought from the store. I'm going to have some shredded chicken from the chicken thighs. I'm going to use shredded product from the store and put together a carrot, apple, and cabbage salad. So I have a soft tortilla. I have some soft chicken. I have a little crunchy salad. Cheese, which is shredded. You can buy shredded cheese. Uh, you can also buy cheese in the block and grate it yourself. Uh, in my lovely little grocery flyer, can of cheese was two for four dollars. Great deal. I buy it, I put it in the freezer, and I just pull it out when I need it. Um, and I'm going to use packaged salsa. So two items that I don't have to necessarily prepare myself. And then for dessert, I'm just going to have sliced blueberries with I mean, I'm gonna have sliced peaches with blueberries. If you feel like you're not getting enough protein here, if you didn't save enough chicken for your tortillas, you could add beans to your corn tortillas or rice. And you could also add a little yogurt to your peach and blueberries. So. <clears throat> Let's talk about Wednesday. Wednesday, we don't have any trade overs from what we've made before. <laughs> we're starting fresh, but we're going to use some ground beef that we got brought home from the store or veggie burger that we brought home from the store, a whole wheat bun as our grain, 
some corn on the cob because that's in season, a little ketchup, and then a little tossed salad if you did not actually put the salad on top of your burger. So a pretty easy meal. I'm gonna enjoy some grapes with that as our fruit. A very light meal for this hot, heavy season. <clears throat> and easy to put together. Uh, when we go to our Thursday Italian evening, we're gonna take some of our ground beef that we had from when we made our burger, and we're going to incorporate that into a pre-made marinara sauce, a store-bought marinara sauce that you like. Just be careful of the salt and sugar content in that marinara, but you can purchase that product and not have to worry with making it. You can use some whole wheat spaghetti. Remember, the Barilla pasta was on sale, so I bought some spaghetti. Um, if you don't do ground beef, you can add white bean to that spaghetti and kale, and that's uh, a traditional Italian dish. Um, you can also have broccoli on the side for some nice green and textural greenness uh, vegetable, and then peaches and blueberries again for dessert. So this is actually a really attractive plate. You have your spaghetti, you maybe have a little ground beef, you have your redness of your marinara, bright green of your kale and broccoli, and then your dessert. So that's really a lovely meal. Um, Fish Friday, cod was on sale, so I bought a little cod. Cod is a very flaky, non-threatening white fish. Uh, we're just going to broil it with a little bit of lemon and capers. With that, we're gonna take quinoa, which is a protein, a complete protein, and we're gonna take some of our carrot and cabbage salad and fold it into the quinoa so we have a nice crunch. Quinoa, some people feel like is a little too small and uninteresting. Uh, it can really accept all kinds of different flavors, but if you feel like it's very bland to you, you can add things to it. So we're gonna take some of our carriage cabbage apple salad, fold it into our quinoa, have it with our fish, have some nice bright broccoli on the side, and then orange slices. If this is too much acid for you, the lemon and the orange, you could trade out your fruit for more grapes or maybe more applesauce. You do want something in this meal to be a little bit resistant. The fish is going to be soft. This is going to be kind of soft because those vegetables from Tuesday will have softened a bit, especially if you've added a dressing to them. Broccoli, depending on how much you need to cook it, you might want something that gives a little resistance to your teeth. So. Um, but this is also a fairly easy meal, and we're also making use of a salad that we made over here. And broccoli is just a go-to vegetable you should have in your refrigerator all the time, either broccoli raw or broccoli. If you can't bring yourself to eat dark leafy greens, broccoli is the next go-to. So. Saturday, we're going to make sheet pan tofu. So we're just gonna cube up tofu, toss it in a little oil, maybe in a little tamari, throw it on a sheet pan. We're gonna throw carrots on there with it. We're gonna take some of our corn that we cooked on Wednesday, take it off of the cob, and toss it in with the carrots so it gets a nice roasted richness to it. And with the quinoa, we're just going to shred the kale and fold it into the quinoa and add a little bit of a sesame dressing to it. So it's very easy. The quinoa and the kale and the dressing will help to kind of break the cell walls of that kale down so it's not so tough to eat. So while your sheet pan tofu is in the oven and maybe you want to throw in, like I said, you want to throw your roasted carrots and corn in as well, you can start your quinoa salad with that kale and by the time you sit down to eat dinner, that kale will be to a point where it's not tough to eat. You definitely want to take the stems out and shred it or ribbon it before you add it into your quinoa. But this quinoa is traveling over here. It's just we made enough so that we can have it in a different way.
When you meal plan, don't be intimidated. Don't be kind of um, scared of actually putting stuff down on paper. You can always scratch it out and put something else in. You can always look at it and say, oh, that's way too much food. It gives you an idea. That's why it's a good thing to do because it gives you some sort of orientation to actually how much food you're eating or how much food you're not eating. So it is important that we get all of those components of a healthy plate into at least our major meal of the day. A lot of seniors are not eating three meals a day, understandably because of economics and also because our metabolism is not going as fast, we're not physically as active, we're not as hungry. So if you are down to one major meal a day with snacking on either side, healthy snacking hopefully, do make it and take the time to actually put consideration into what that meal is going to be. So I hope this helped you out a little bit in having some more tips to put a meal plan together. Don't be afraid to do it. It's really fun. It's really kind of interesting. And it also can challenge you to change stuff up. If you see that you're repeating the same things over and over and over, take one day and make something different. Anyway, I'm Chef Robin. I'll be seeing you in the kitchen. Thank you.